Hello everyone, Darren from Draytech Australia and New Zealand. When you encounter a problem on your network, you often need to carry out some diagnostics to find the cause. To assist in troubleshooting, Draytech routers include several diagnostic functions that will help. In this webinar, I'll go through each of these and show you what they do and how to use them. Here's the diagnostics menu, which you'll find in later model routers. Earlier models may have some variations and fewer options. Let's go through them. So first up is dial out triggering. This shows the packet header that is transmitted when a WAN connection, such as a PPPoE connection, is initiated. Both hex format and the decoded format are displayed. This is mainly for information purposes and is unlikely to have any real relevance if your router is always on and connected. Next in the menu we have routing table. This is an important tool to troubleshoot routing issues. It displays IPv4 and IPv6 routes which are built from direct connections, static routing, dynamic routing, policy based routing and inter VLAN routing. In the routing table we have three main components which are the destination IP and its subnet mask, the gateway IP address and the interface used. The symbol in the first column shows the type of route used. Under the image there's a description for what those symbols mean. So we have a C for connected, S means it's a static route, R means it's a route learned using the RIP protocol, asterisk means it's the default route, and the tilde wavy line symbol means it's a private route. The first entry in the routing table is the default route, which is indicated by 0.0.0.0 forward slash 0.0.0.0. When a workstation needs to send data to a destination host or network, the router is usually involved in making the communication possible. However, if the router can't find the destination network in its routing table, the destination will be unreachable. In this case, the default route is configured in the router to send all data packets for unknown destination networks to the interface corresponding to the default route setting. In this example, we have the default route directed to 168.95.98.254 via WAN1, which is our internet connection. Okay, so you may wonder, how can I check that routing has been set up correctly? Well, an easy way is to use traceroute to check the data path to the destination. Draytech routers have a built-in traceroute function, which we'll check out later, but you can also do it from a PC using a command prompt and the tracert command. Both should show the same results. In the example shown here, on the top right we use the router GUI to perform a traceroute to google.com, and below it we use the command prompt on a PC to draytech.com. Both show the hops on the internet to get to the destination, and both should reveal that the correct path has been configured in the router. Here's an example of how to use a tracert from a command prompt on your PC. First, we'll need to open up a command prompt. To do that, just click on the search option at the bottom left of the screen in Windows 11 and type CMD, then select it. Then just type tracert space and whatever website or IP address you like. We'll use google.com as an example and enter. So the first hop is to my TPG supplied router then the TPG gateway. Then we see some TPG routers, and then it changes to a different network, and we see more routers only identified by their IP addresses. Then finally, the destination gateway. And that's it. Another way to do a traceroute is to use a command prompt to telnet to the router, or use the router CLI, and then run the IP tracert and IP route status commands. Note that Windows 10 and 11 don't have the Telnet client installed by default, but it isn't difficult to install. I'll include a link below with instructions on how to do it. Next item in the menu is ARP cache table. This lists all devices connected to the router and shows the IP address used and the corresponding MAC address. The ARP cache can be used when troubleshooting network issues such as IP address conflicts as it will show the MAC address of the device using that IP address or to verify that devices are in the correct LAN. The host ID can also be displayed. This will help to speed up the troubleshooting process. The ARP cache table will also display the MAC addresses of any devices connected to the WAN ports in the router as shown here. Next we have IPv6 neighbor table. This displays the mapping between Ethernet hardware addresses, that is MAC addresses, and IPv6 addresses. This information is helpful in diagnosing IPv6 address conflicts and other network problems. 
The DHCP table displays the assigned IP addresses for devices connected to the router. The information on this page is also useful for diagnosing network problems. You can also view which devices have static IP addresses assigned. The results of both DHCP assigned IP addresses as well as static IP addresses can be filtered by LAN to make it easier to diagnose network problems such as duplicate IP address conflicts that have been statically assigned. Network Address Translation, NAT, is a mechanism where one or more private IP addresses can share a single public IP address. The latest 128 NAT entries are stored in the NAT session table. It shows the source and destination IP addresses and ports used, as well as the WAN interface. This table can be used to troubleshoot port redirection or open port issues when port forwarding is not working as expected. The router sets up a pseudo port in the NAT session table, which is a temporary port used for NAT to keep track of the sessions. Here we have an example of a NAT session where port redirection is used. Here incoming internet sessions are forwarded to the relevant PC based on port numbers. In this example we have port 85 redirected to 192.168.1.10, port 86 to .11, port 87 to .12, and port 88 to .13. The information from these sessions will be displayed in the NAT session table. Next in the Diagnostics menu we have the DNS cache table. Dratec routers can function as DNS servers, which allows LAN clients to look up DNS information by sending DNS requests to the router. This DNS information is temporarily cached in the router and can be viewed here. This diagram illustrates how local private IP addresses can be mapped to a domain name to be used on the local network. It's this information that is held temporarily in the DNS cache table. Next, ping diagnosis. This is a handy tool to test connectivity to a host on the internet by entering either its IP address or its DNS name. The router will then send ping packets to the remote host. It also measures the round trip time to give you an indication of the speed and quality of the connection. A poor quality connection may have a large number of dropped packets resulting in timeout results. Also, if you ping the DNS name, you can check that DNS resolution is working in the router. If that doesn't work, but pinging the IP address does, you'll know you have a DNS problem. If neither works, then you'll know your internet connection has a problem or the remote host is down. The data flow monitor can be used to check the real-time bandwidth usage for devices on the LAN. The number of sessions being used at a given time is also displayed. This feature can be used to troubleshoot high bandwidth usage by a LAN client. Also displayed is the current and peak data flow for each WAN connection. This page is periodically refreshed according to the time interval selected, which can be from 10 seconds up to 1800 seconds, which is 30 minutes. So it can't be used for long-term recording or monitoring of traffic flow through the router. The data flow monitor can also be used to verify that settings configured in bandwidth management and bandwidth and session limits are working as expected. Within the data flow monitor, there's an action item called block, which allows blocking a particular device for troubleshooting. Clicking on that will block the specified device for 5 minutes, but you can unblock it manually before 5 minutes if required. This can also be used to temporarily free up some bandwidth if the WAN connection becomes congested. Traffic Graph is a handy feature that displays the transmitted and received traffic for each WAN connection over a period of time. It can be used to check for unusual activity in the router, such as high traffic loads after hours when you expect to see minimal traffic flow. Just keep in mind that it doesn't show traffic for an individual device, but total traffic to the internet. VPN Graph is available in higher end routers supporting more than two VPN tunnels, such as the Vega 2865 series. Under the VPN Login Details tab, it displays the VPN syslog entries for both host to LAN and LAN to LAN connections. The VPN Graph tab displays VPN traffic over a period of time in graphical format. Traceroute we looked at earlier and showed how to do it on a PC, here's where you can do it from the router itself. It reports the IP addresses of all the routers it pinged in between. It also records the time taken for each hop the packet makes during its route to the destination. If a remote site is unreachable, Traceroute can be used to check if the cause is due to a break in the data path. For the host you can use either its domain name or its IP address. 
In the earlier example, we mentioned it could be used as a way to check that routing is configured correctly in the router. Let's take a look at an example of that. So here we have load balance route policy configured in the router to send traffic to 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 to WAN 2 and traffic for 8.8.4.4 to be sent to the LTE WAN. The load balance route policy in the router looks like this. We have index 1 configured to send traffic to 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 through WAN 2 and index 2 is configured to send traffic to 8.8.4.4 through the LTE connection. Running traceroute to 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 will give you a result similar to this, showing all the hops on the way to the final destination and showing that traffic went through WAN 2. So our load balance route policy is working for WAN 2. We can now try the same thing for 8.8.4.4 .4 and we should see it went to WAN 3 which is our LTE connection. Syslog Explorer offers a quick way to review and download the router syslog. Some low-end routers such as the Vigor 130 and Vigor 167 and older model routers may not have this option. Syslogs are used to diagnose various issues, for example a VPN connection is not being established or a firewall rule is not working as expected. The syslogs collected can be filtered by selecting one of the syslog types. Selecting all will display all the logs. If you only want to see the VPN logs then you can just select the VPN filter. A maximum of 1000 lines can be displayed here. For more extensive syslogs captured over a long period, it's recommended to use the USB syslog which will save the logs to an attached USB flash drive. The web syslog can be downloaded using the export function so it can be sent to Draytech support for analysis. The IPv6 TSPC status page can help to diagnose issues with IPv6 connections that utilise TSP, that is Tunnel Setup Protocol. If TSPC is configured correctly, the router will display the details as shown in the example here. This will be displayed when the router is connected to the tunnel broker successfully. The DSL status diagnostic page is often used to troubleshoot VDSL issues. It shows the firmware modem code, upstream and downstream speeds, signal to noise ratio, attenuation and errors such as CRC, as well as many other error conditions. The information on this page can be sent to Draytech support along with syslogs to help find the cause of a VDSL connection issue. Sometimes the cause can be noisy phone lines or the modem code used not being compatible with the NBN connection. Usually using an incompatible modem code results in an unstable VDSL connection or sometimes failure to connect. Some parameters such as SNR margin can be tweaked by using Telnet commands. The high availability status page displays the status of all routers belonging to the same DARP group, that's Draytech Address Resolution Protocol. This diagram shows high availability using hot standby mode where two routers share a common WAN source, one router is a primary and the other is a secondary for redundancy. The secondary router is always synchronised to the primary so that if the primary router fails the secondary router will take over and become the primary device using the same WAN to connect to the internet. In the authentication information page we can see which users have been authenticated by RADIUS or 802.1x. There's two tabs on this page, the first being the authentication user list which displays details of users who have been authenticated. The other is the authentication information log which true to its name displays the complete authentication log information. The DOS flood table is a handy feature to readily identify potentially malicious network traffic. For this to work it needs the firewall feature defence setup to be configured and the threshold set which you can see in the screenshot on the right. Once it's set up any DOS attacks detected will be reported in the DOS flood table. Which looks like this. The identified IP addresses and the destination ports used in SYN, UDP and ICMP flood attacks will be shown on the respective tab pages. The red X icon next to an IP address means that a DOS event was detected at this address. You can block these IP addresses by simply clicking on the block button beside each one. A point to note here is that for this function to work you will need to enable SYN, UDP, ICMP flood defence in firewall defence setup. To do this go to the firewall defence setup menu and select SYN, UDP, ICMP flood defence as shown here. The final item we'll look at is route policy diagnostics. It's linked to the load balance route policy settings in the router. 
It's a handy diagnostic feature to verify that routing policies are working as expected and to troubleshoot routing issues within the router. There are two modes that can be used. These are analyze using a single packet and analyze multiple packets using an input file. In the example shown here, we can use route policy diagnosis to verify that the settings are configured correctly. For a single packet, we just need to specify the source and destination IP addresses, and the result will be displayed at the bottom, showing which rule matches the entered criteria. Okay, so in summary, we looked at each of the menu options in the Diagnostics menu, which is available in later model Draytech routers. We included some examples of how to use some of these functions as well. In our next webinar, we'll look at troubleshooting some common problems where we'll use some of the diagnostic functions covered today. Okay, that's all for now, but please stay tuned. If you have any questions, we'll be available in the live chat on the right of your screen for the next five minutes. For more information about Draytech products, please check out our website at www.draytech.com.au or send us an email to sales at draytech.com.au or give us a call on 02 9838 Please like and subscribe below, and if you'd like a notification anytime we put up a new video, please select all from the subscribe drop-down menu as well. Thanks, and bye for now.